So, thank you for your patience, and here we go. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, my partner, maybe let you introduce yourself. This is uh, Knut Rönelt from Kervida Brauerei, and uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Moin Moin, mein Name ist Knut Rönelt, ich bin 45, Barmeister, betreibe in Uelzen die Bar Knuts Mixbecher und beschäftige mich seit einigen Jahren auch viel mit Bier. Das heißt, ich weiß heute nicht mehr, ob ich eine reinrassige Cocktailbar habe oder eine, die viel Bier verkauft oder eine Bierbar, die relativ viele Cocktails macht. Zumindest ähm, habe ich das Thema selber immer als unheimlich spannend empfunden und äh, in den letzten Jahren sind dann ja tolle Biere äh, erschienen und logischerweise, wenn man sich mit dem Mixen beschäftigt, ist das dann eine Zus zusätzliche Zutat, aus der man jede Menge auch nochmal machen kann. Ähm, ich werde heute ein bisschen verschiedene Sachen mal vorstellen. Wir fangen mal damit an, dass ich mit einer Reduktion, das mit einem Porter gemacht wurde, ähm, arbeite. Und zwar mit einem schönen Klassiker. Applejack Rabbit, ähm, Harry Craddock 1930 im äh, Savoy Cocktail Book. Äh, ist jetzt ein Twist darauf. Er setzt den dort drin vorkommenden Ahornsirup. Und äh, da es ein Apfelbrand ist, jetzt auch, glaube ich, jahreszeitlich ein schön thematisch ganz gut passende Geschichte. Ähm, ich denke, ich fange einfach mal gleich mal an damit. Äh, solltet ihr zwischendurch Fragen haben? Ach ja, uh, I'd like to... Uh, I, shall I do it in English again? Or did you get a little bit? Okay. Um, my name is Knut Rönelt. I'm 45 years and um, run a bar in Uelzen that sells uh, craft beer and cocktails or cocktails and craft beer. I don't know what it is exactly. Um, so I um, worked a lot in the, during the last years with both. Uh, the mixing thing and as ingredient also craft beer. Um, I'd like to do three drinks today where I use um, craft beer in different roles. In the first role it will be a reduction or a syrup uh, based on a porter. And um, I do it with a classic drink from uh, Harry Craddock. Um, it's the Applejack Rabbit. A very nice one for the autumn and uh, based on, I use Calvados, um, in the States you would maybe use uh, Applejack, but that's not so good to get here, so I decided to take Calvados. Nice, nice one, the ingredients are Calvados, um, orange juice and uh, citrus and the syrup. I. Um, um, take it instead of uh, Ahorn, uh, maple, maple syrup, I s swap it for that, so it has a nice um, malty, it br brings maltiness and stuff like that into the drink. And uh, yeah, so I give away the mic now and start mixing. Yeah, maybe a few introductory words to uh, beer cocktails. Um, I myself have been working in the beer scene for 12 years now and uh, through my work with Mixology magazine I got acquainted with uh, the bar culture. Um, I went to a lot of nice cocktail bars and I was amazed at the dedication to detail and quality that many of these bars had. They were working with top-notch qualities but when it came to the beer, the beer that they usually had was some kind of boring mass-produced industrial lager. And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you have small batch distilleries and handmade syrups everywhere, it just doesn't make sense to have a basically flavorless neutral beer. And uh, so first I try to convince bars to stock more interesting beers. That's worked fairly well. And uh, then the interest became, hey, why not mix with beer? It's a relatively recent phenomenon um, because beer is still sort of the stepchild of the bar, but it's changing. And uh, the goal with these beer cocktail shows is to let people know that beer is not better, but also not worse than any other ingredient, and you can use it in your everyday cocktails as well as anything else. So our approach is, one, to uh, show you different uses of how a beer, or what role a beer can play in a cocktail. And uh, yeah, number one is the Applejack Rabbit, right? 
The specialty in this drink is uh, a reduction of a porter. Uh, I um, use um, for two bottles of porter, I reduce to the, to, to the half and add um, 180 grams of sugar and let it boil for a while. And then you, have, you still have um, a viscosity that you can um, pour it. It's not too thick. You have to, if, if you do such uh, syrups, you will have the problem sometimes that if, it is, if it's very, um, if it's too thick, you can't uh, pour it anymore. And uh, then you have to uh, put, add some hot water to make it flow again. Very nice drink now for the autumn. I do an orange zest on it. Keep it simple. I always like garnishes that are not too complicated. Just helping out. So that's cocktail number one. Our uh, people backstage are working hard to give you your samples. So just a little longer. Um, yeah. Okay, then let's interact a little bit. Uh, has any one of you worked so far with uh, beer and cocktails? No one of us, of you? Oh, okay. What did you do? Porter? No, oh, okay. That's uh, an amazing fact, uh, or that's okay. Um, you always will need very uh, beers that have a, a rich character. It won't work with a very thin or, or very uh, weak beers. Uh, so porters, IPAs and stuff like that are uh, quite good. Um, we had in the choice also a drink with the Belgian wit, but we uh, um, decided to take this one in. Um, so you need some beer that brings character and flavor and body with, with it. Uh, with uh, the problem was uh, in former days when you only had Pilsner or stuff like that uh, that you had problems to keep the uh, a drink in a in a in a quite uh, usual usual uh, or in a, in a in a size or the the size of the beer. Um, uh, you had to fl uh, float it more or less with beer uh, unless you had uh, 20 cls of beer until the beer um, appears in the drink and um, that was in most cases for me not very satisfying so um, I it, it took some years until I uh, uh, un until I uh, saw that you um, can use characterful beers that uh, have a good body and a good flavor and stuff like that. Have a sip. And um, how do you deal with the, the carbonation in beer? Beer tends to be fizzy. So is that something you are looking for in your cocktail? Is that something that you uh, include in the balance of the cocktail? Or is it something that you try to get out of the cocktail? So are you creating a fizz or something else? Mm. It uh, always depends um, what I want to do. And now in the syrup, I don't need, need it. Um, and in most other drinks, um, I will have it. I want to have it. Um, next drink is a good example for that. Uh, it's a classic from Hamburg. Um, because of that, I called it Hamburg Boy, more or less. Um, because the gin I use in it is from Hamburg. The recipe is of a great colleague of us, uh, Jörg Meyer from Le Lyon, and uh, the beer I add is also from Hamburg, so we call it just uh, Hamburger Jung. And uh, there I use the beer in a complete different, different role. I use it, uh, the fruitiness of an IPA and also the bitterness, um, instead of an aroma bitter, stuff like that. And um, you can, I think you can use always uh, the beer in different roles. And 
because of this, uh, and it depends where you want to go if you uh, want to have uh, carbon or not. And would you generally say that you're more on the side of the people who want to let the beer shine in the cocktail or who regard it just as one of the ingredients? Um, in most cases, to be um, d'accord with the brewers, my way is to take the beer and build something around the beer so you can find, find the beer in the, in the drink in the end you can find it. Then you are all right with the brewers. That was always important for me because um, I work for a nice brewery, and, uh, but I did for some other breweries also drinks um, so that the brewery uh, can, um, can identify with this drink as well. So I always choose a way to build around the beer and not just use it as um, as a, an add-on or an, a modifier or stuff like that. So beers, cocktails inspired by the flavor profile of the beer. On to the next one. All right, so uh, how many here know the gin basil smash? Only four people, five, six, seven. I w actually, I would be surprised if anyone here didn't know the gin basil smash. But uh, so there are some people. That means maybe we should explain the history of the gin basil smash, York Maya, and so on. Very nice, interesting beer he did in the summer of 2008. It's uh, basically uh, gin sour. He added um, uh, basil leaves too. Um, very refreshing. It's more or less one of the classic, new classic. You must say, and you will find it maybe um, more or less everywhere around the world on bar menus. So um, it's an important drink for the last decade, I think. Um, so it is quite interesting to do a twist on it. And uh, I thought it was uh, matching that uh, maybe in fruity IPA with a nice bitterness in the end, um, you uh, we were able to build it in, I, th I think. And it's quite running well, I have it since more or less five years on my menu and it, it works so so i let you work on that um yeah the gin basil smash uh, iconic cocktail from hamburg uh, jörg meyer invented it and uh, i think five years ago now uh, i went to nottingham and to one of those uh, up-and-coming speakeasy bars where you had to sort of actually i think the front was um, a laundromat store and you had to go through one of the laundromats into the bar and a very nice atmosphere. And I asked the bartender to uh, get me a gin basil smash and they had no idea what I was talking about. I think if I came back now, they would all know. Um, so the, the basic technique is to muddle the leaves a little bit. You don't like that? Okay, <laughs> I'm coming down. No, sorry, you don't have to. <laughs> okay. All right, so you can, there are different ways to make the gin basil smash. You can just uh, rub them in between your palms, that's your technique. Or if you want your cocktail to go really green, then you have to muddle them and shake them. It depends on how much basil flavor and how much uh, plant bitterness is okay with you. All right. <laughs> no. So which one is your technique? Which one is your technique? Are you uh, muddling between your palms or are you? Okay. So he's doing it your way. <laughs> That's the direct consequence. If you don't muddle, you have to shake very long.
Okay, so that's the beer. 6CL. And uh, it's a single hop IPA by Kiev Wieder Brauerei. So if you want to try it solo, it's right there. Um, the series is quite unique in that they always brew the same beer, but dry hop with a single hop, that's always a different variety. In this case, we have Mosaic, I think. Is this Mosaic? It's Mosaic Hops. Um, that's a West Coast, Northern West Coast American hop variety. And uh, it's one of the most popular right now. It's very famous for its citrusy flavors, tropical fruit flavors. Um, are, is everyone here familiar with the term dry hopping? Anyone not familiar with it? Okay. So dry hopping means that when the beer is basically already brewed, Normally, hops are added during the boil, when the beer is cooking. But if you add hops during the fermentation, then you keep the bitterness away, but you keep all the nice flavors, the essential oils. Basically, you get into the beer um, what the hop smells like. That's it. So that's where all the citrusy flavors and the tropical fruit flavors and the resiny, piney flavors come from. Um, and Mosaic is one of the most famous hops for that. So. Yeah, we're going for the bitterness here mostly, but I think that the, the essential oils and fruit flavors will also add to the gin basil smash. Um. Yeah, very, very nice drink. I love it very much, and uh, you will get the sample right, right in a minute. Um. I think it fits quite quite well into the gin sour and in this environment, especially with the gin su, and especially with this uh, very nice uh, single hop IPA. Very nice series. If you like to try, just come come to our stall over there. Um, the basic drink is now on the market for more or less ten years, I think, and. Um, it is quite a classic in the summer, by now. All right for you? Can you describe the measures that you use? Ah, okay. I uh, used uh, 6 CL of uh, Jinsu, um, two, um, two uh, CL uh, sugar syrup, two and a half CL uh, lemon juice, and uh, s around five, six uh, basil leaves. And uh, of the beer, after shaking, I add the beer, um, around six to eight CL, I always use for it. Any more questions? All right for you? <laughs> okay. Then let's do the the last drink. Uh, now we're in the mood for an after dinner drink. It's a, a sweet one. I use the porter of some friends of mine from the brewery Meshsee from Hanover. And because of um, of this um, of the name the porter is called Hafensänger. Hafensänger means something like, um, oh, I don't know how to translate. Uh, it's a, more or less a slang word. Hafensänger. Um, someone who sings in the port would have been the direct translation, but it means somebody who um, yeah, tells you something that is uh, a little bit too much, or uh, stuff like that. Um, Quite amazing on this on this drink is quite nice. I use it as a modifier, and I use its flavors of uh, coffee and chocolate in the drink. And I add it uh, and I um, use vodka as a base, and add a nice uh, cafe liquor to that uh, of Patron from uh, tequila-based uh, coffee liquor. Um, Add some sugar, add some espresso, and yeah, then we shake it, and then we drink it. Mm. 
Yes, so in this case, we had to forego the original beer choice. But uh, one of the good things about beer is uh, you can usually easily replace uh, the ingredients. And uh, because of the different balance of the beer, you will probably get a slightly different flavor profile for your drink. So in this case, the Lowlander Porter, Porter um, is brewed with a little bit of vanilla and licorice root. So the beer itself is already kind of a botanical mix, uh, which is typical for this brand. And uh, I think it will slightly change the drink. We'll see how that affects it. So now we pour the beer directly into the shaker. After shaking, give it a little stir. And there we go. Looking good. Uh, chocolate as garnish. Special thanks to Remy Martin, who sponsored the chocolate. Oh, that's it. I used um, 4CL of vodka. Um, 2CL uh, Patron XO, then around 2CL uh, sugar syrup, um, 3CL espresso, and I added um, 6CL of the porter. And uh, the garnish was uh, choco, chocolate, bitter chocolate. And yeah, that's the three drinks I wanted to show you today, and where uh, beer is. Uh, appearing in different roles. Yeah, well, of course, try. Which one do you like? Pick it up <laughs> and have fun. Are there any questions? The recipe for the first one is 5CL Calvados. 5CL Calvados. 2.5CL orange juice. 1.5CL lemon juice. And um, then you add around, it depends on the viscosity and the sugar in the syrup, around a 1.5 to to 2 CL of the syrup. And as a garnish, we had an orange zest. Uh, just a little bit more patience. It uh, takes a while to, to flake the chocolate onto the drinks. <laughs> but we can actually see from uh, up here what they're doing down there, and it looks like we're almost ready.
If there are any questions, uh, feel free to uh, write me an email. Knut dot uh, at Google Mail or, or just come to our stall. I will give you a business card. Then email me and I will send you the recipes. No problem. Because we uh, just had the uh, question of uh, combining coffee and beer um, and coffee liqueur in one drink. Um, actually, these flavors are very, very similar. I don't know how many of you know that uh, roasted barley, the key ingredient of beer, is also used to make a coffee replacement. For the Germans here, uh, Caro Landcafé, uh, that coffee replacement is basically, it, it already has the coffee roast. There is a type of uh, beer malt that is called coffee malt. And that's what they use for this coffee replacement, the substitute. So these, these flavors are already married and uh, it's actually quite natural to put them together in a drink. Um, is there any particular reason that you used vodka as your spirit? Um, I uh, tried uh, some other spirits as well. I uh, chose vodka because it was neutral. I tried it with some other, uh, but this was uh, the result was was best with vodka to um, focus on the on the other flavors. That's what I thought. I was like, everything else is already so flavorful, so roasty, so dark that your spirit needs to be sort of just lifting everything else up. Yeah. That was the intention with vodka. What do you think about it? All right for you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your attention. Um, if, you are, if you like, um, we are here on the, in the same place uh, tomorrow again. Same, same uh, drinks, but... Uh, if you are here, then come on. <laughs> well, maybe we have a few surprises, I don't know. Um, but we have a uh, get-together um, coming up here, basically where you're sitting. Um, it's something that we're trying for the first time. It's uh, basically an informal gathering of people interested in beer. We will present some sort of focus topic, but Anyone can come, anyone can enjoy the beers that we have. Um, it's for free, so, you know, if you'd like to stop by very soon, happening here. Thank you, Knut. Thank you as well. And, uh, yeah, that's the show. A big hand for Knut.